pretty touch surface. Yeah. Okay, so on the face of it, it's very much like the systems you've seen before, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but we want something a little bit different here, because if we take any of these images, we can reveal some hidden information. So there's a picture of the night sky there. Um, and I could say to you, I don't know if you recognize that part of the night sky, but what I can do is I can reveal um, some information about it using just this piece of tracing paper, okay? So I'm not projecting from above, it's actually the, this extra information is coming from below, and yet you can't see it there at all, right? But here we can see Orion and the names of some of the stars that make up that constellation. So here's a map of our home city in Cambridge in the UK. Um, you're not familiar with Cambridge, I guess, but if I wanted to, if you wanted to find your way around, you, you could look at some of the street names here. Holy crap. And so that projection is coming from <laughs> below? The yeah. projection is coming from below. Right, so so here's, a, here's a cow and there's some text about the cow. We've got, uh, you know, we can put a wireframe of the car. Right, right, yeah. So is there, is there, what, is there any special quality in the tracing paper? No. no. So what, what are you beaming up? Are you could, so the, you do it on your hand? The special, oh, I guess yeah. it wouldn't be see-through. Uh, <laughs> Right. Yeah. I see. Yeah. So, so that in some ways the secret thing, the thing that's fundamentally different here from a regular surface is this display material here. So a regular surface uses material much like this right. in the top of the unit, and it projects from below, and that's where you see the image. Right. And there's also a camera in a regular surface that detects when you put your fingers on this material. Right. Okay. Right. So we have the projectors, we have the camera, and we're doing that same stuff. But the difference is that our material is actually a liquid crystal material, right. which has two different states. So its natural state is very much like this, and it behaves like a regular surface. If we apply a voltage across it, it goes transparent like a sheet of glass. Right. So it's like that. You can get privacy glass. They use it architecturally. They right. use it, and, and so you've got a frosted window, and, and you can make it go transparent. Yeah. We're actually using a special version of that that's very high performance. Right. Okay. We're switching it backwards and forwards all the time, continuously. So fast you can't see it flickering. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. And whenever it's diffuse, we're actually projecting this image here on the right. Right. Which is what you see on the surface. Okay. okay. Yeah. And a fraction of a second later, we stop projecting that. We turn this transparent like a sheet of glass, and we yeah. project this. Right. Yeah. But when you're projecting into a sheet of glass, you don't see anything, right? The rays of light basically just pass in front of you. So you don't right. see that second image. So what you're seeing yeah. is this, and then a fraction of a second later nothing, and then this, and then nothing. Right, right. Because it's going so quickly, and because of your persistence of vision, yeah. you just see a static image. Right. But what's happening in the meantime is that other image is going through. It's actually hitting the ceiling. Yeah, right. right? Oh, yeah. Right. Unless I catch no, some of those. Unless I catch some of those rays of light on the way through with an yeah. object like this, right. or, or a simple display like this, right? So when you're setting this up, you just create two image files and associate yes. them with each other? So the application here is moving based on the touch. It's moving so the image on the right, and then it, the associated image is moving as well. So why, why, why are you press able to move hard. the cow and not me? Press a little press harder. Hard. Oh, press harder. I see. Right. I think yeah. that's some special one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Only like so, people with English accent. <laughs> but, um, so, so I'm trying to think of the, the, of the application. I'm trying well, to visualize the application. Sure. Let's, let's look at this, yeah. this second part of the demo here. So this is basically similar. It's a cheap bit of plastic with a diffuser on it. Um, but it is a little bit more sophisticated. It has two AA batteries and some infrared LEDs in it. So it's still pretty damn cheap. It's like a dollar or so. Um, but what it does is it emits infrared light. Uh, basically two strips of infrared light along these marks here. And, and we have a camera in there. So if you remember, I was talking about the surface and it has this kind of material on its display. Um, and, and so if you imagine you're inside the surface looking up, like the camera, there's a projector next to you shining an image up there. But if the user comes and touches, you see their finger touching, right? But as soon as they start moving it away, you don't normally see anything, okay? With our system, we can make it transparent like a sheet of glass. So even when the hand fingers further away, we can see what's going on. And we use that in this part of the demo. So this is tr tracking the infrared light that's being emitted by this. Right. And, and this, again, just a proof of concept, we're just showing a little bit of a video. But as I move this around, right. that image tracks now. So we're, we're tracking the position of this. Yeah. And we can even track the orientation of this. Normally, if I project a square, for example, onto a piece of paper, and then I tilt the paper, it, 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 it kind of stretches out into a rectangle, right? But what we do is we, we track the orientation of this, and we compensate for it. So as I start tilting that, the image that we're actually projecting, we squash it before we project it, right? So that when it hits this, it ends up with the right aspect ratio. Right, right. So that you can imagine this is like having a mobile display that you can interact with personally, but unlike using a PDA, there's no electronics in it, right? It's just LEDs and, a, and an AA battery and a cheap bit of plastic. As long as it's held over this surface. It makes me think of augmented reality, but it's not quite. It's, it's not quite. Slightly different. No. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but yeah. you could scoop content off this and onto this mobile surface and interact with it here. Right. This surface actually supports multi-touch as well. The calibration's off a bit whack. 
But when I touch here, yeah. you see these blobs. Yeah. So we can actually support multi-touch on this as well. And there's no smarts in here. It's all being done by the unit underneath. Right, right, right. So one application we're actually we're actually working towards is um, imagine you've got some 3D volumetric data from like a brain scan, for example. And, and, and I'm going to say, well, virtually that that, that data is here. You're the physician. You want to look at it. Say, so, well, you imagine that data is in this space here, and this is the device you use to look at it. So you can move this up and down and see the different scans. But if you want to look, oh, there's something there I'm a bit worried about. Well, you can just you know change the angle a little bit, right? And just get the view that you want. Immediate interaction, right? Rather than trying to manipulate using a keyboard and a mouse in a non-intuitive way, right? This is very intuitive. You could just do. So, so any any sort of vertical, vertical industry where, where visualization of yes. complex amounts of data is important. Yeah, like building visualization, pipe work, yeah. electrical Architect, work, architects, architects that go yes. up, up floors yeah. and yeah. Yeah. architects. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Anything in kind of maintenance of complex yeah. machinery, yeah. engineering. Yeah. Right. So, okay. are you planning okay. to release yeah. this as like the surface too? Yeah. Uh, no, well, so yeah. This, I mean, yeah. I, I don't know how, how well it so works. So in, this kind of stuff. Sorry, I don't know. There is like if you know how it works, but in research, we kind of follow the ideas that we think are really exciting, and then we work with the product groups. But just because we're building in research doesn't mean to say it's going to become a Product. So we just bought a, a Surface One. Right. Is there like an upgrade process? Can we can we kind of no, no. pull out a few of the parts? No. No. This is we we built this kind of from the ground up using a, a, a different. What is it, it? It uses some of the same uh, fundamental pr principles, uh -huh. but it works in it works in some ways. It works in quite a different way as well. So no. Is it alright if I hold one of these over one of the images? Yeah, of course. All right. So I am. This is the Hi. the starry sky. You can see the constellation. It's just projecting from below. It's very cool, and it makes what we just bought obsolete. <laughs> That's not quite true. So, so surface, you know, the surface that you bought was was a number of many years in uh, development, and it came out of Microsoft Research. It came out of a collaboration involving right, Microsoft right, right. Research. You know, so maybe a number of years down the, you know, down the pike. You never know, right? Are there any more available. surface upgrades around here anywhere? I don't know. All right. I'm afraid. I've heard. I heard that there is another one, but I'm not sure. Okay. Well.